get off the freaking net. And welcome to the Blaze On Nation, where the World Wide Web and Real Life World collide and brings current events to you and takes it all into debate. With your host from the depths, JBJ Blaze. Blaze On Nation, episode 9, recorded on November the 14th, 2013. And, yeah, it's been about a week since the last episode. Actually, no, not a week. Um, more than a week since the last episode, because a week ago was the 7th. And I haven't, well, actually, no, not since the last episode, since the trial recording of this one, because the first time was a flunk, because I got a little too tired, so I decided, heck with it, I'm gonna do bedtime now, so, that's where that went, and, yeah, so, oh, I just about forgot, about the um little um journey thing um what do I call it again? I think it was something like sidewalk talk or whatever. But um so what's been going on this week? Um tuned into the shaft and I got my listener contribution bumper played on their podcast so I'm happy. Of which way, um, if you have not already, I have retweeted their post. If you have not already, go to, I believe, podcastawards.com. And under gaming, vote for The Shaft. Great podcast, especially if you love Minecraft like me. Like, you don't have to love it as much as I do, but... If you love Minecraft, or at least like it, and you like podcasts, go vote, go vote for them. And I'm not on there yet with Blazon Nation, because we haven't gone past 150 episodes yet, so... Yeah, that's where that's going. Um, and other things... I went for CPR training yesterday and Tuesday, and now I am CPR certified, which, um, at least I'm pretty sure this means I'm certified. Standard first aid with CPR, C, and AED, which if you do not know what they stand for, CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And AED, and on the test I cannot remember what the D was until we took it up and recited it. Automated external defibrillator, not defibrillator. Defibrillator. It comes after the B. It's quite fascinating what you can learn about how to save people's lives, but um, what we learned about was how to bandage up someone properly, um, how to perform proper CPR, and use a defibrillator. So, kind of like the TV shows how they um, do that one to, their, to the dying person's heart. Shocking their heart, that's the word I'm looking for. That's pretty much a defibrillator, if you don't know. Um... What other things have been going on? Um, I recently have just set something up with the listener contributions thing. I redid the form so that you can now do just in one form for either podcast or in terms of the cookie conundrum. You can now leave a an idea for what you think should be added to that game, um, and then, what was the other thing, oh, 
And with the power of, I forget the name of the app, but um, there will be a link that says send me a message, send me a voice message, and you can go there and then send me audio of what you want to say, and if I think it's suitable for the show, or I like it, or whatever I think of, you might just be lucky to get heard on a future episode of Blaze on Nation. Um, but yeah, that's kind of about it and stuff other than I watched some of oh yes I got an audio book called A Long Way Gone through audible.com um, audibletrial.com slash the shaft to be exact um, I'm not sure how they'd feel about me talking about their offers on my podcast but that's how I got it, and you can support their show too that way. I'm not sponsored by Audible yet, so I can't promote any of that for my podcast. But, um, Ishmael Beya was a boy soldier, and yeah, I highly recommend that. And actually, that reminds me, I need to send them that recommendation tonight, maybe. After this podcast, I'll hopefully remember to do that. Um, and then just school stuff. And oh, yes, and for Remembrance Day on my YouTube channel, if you look up, it is called JBJ Blaze in World War II Adventure. That is my new adventure map series. That I'm starting for that adventure map. Which I, I originally did that for Remembrance Day. But like heck I can cover it all in one um, 13 minute episode. So there will be more of that coming. And oh yeah and then my The Rage Carry. Eh yeah, not Carry. The Rage Griefer 2. Which is going to. It was originally for my English class, which it still is, and actually I got a pretty darn good mark on it once the teacher got to learn what griefer means, because it's Minecraft slang, being a person who causes grief, so it's not just about destroying structures. When it comes to servers, it can be spamming, it can be attacking another player. Basically the same kind of stuff as bullying or cyberbullying, but in Minecraft. And, yeah, that's pretty much about it. I recommend that you please check out those videos. And let's get to the rundown, shall we? Brace yourselves, it's the Rundown. Alright, so on the Rundown, we have a couple of things here. Um, a not-so-recent event, but if you heard about the Minecon stuff, you'll definitely know about it. And um, what happened was someone had a gun at the airport, went crazy with it, and everyone starts worrying that Wes Wilson from the shaft might have gotten hurt, but turns out he only just found out about it. Um, in which he... That, that there ends up being one dead and two wounded. And... That, I guess that's pretty much just for news stuff. I don't really have much of an opinion on it. Although one person did question, um, and this was on Twitter, I forget who asked the question. Oh, I think it was on high, de I think it was high on definition. Um, who questioned why a person would be able, 
like how they got into the airport with the gun in the first place, but it being a large airport and probably a lot of people going around two and four, um, I think it would probably be maybe a bit difficult to find the gun, but bang and I wasn't there, he might have been there. I'm not saying he's wrong, but anyhow, and other things that have been going on. Aside from the thing that went on crap. Oh yes, it was the father who um, blamed Minecraft for a son bringing a gun and what was the other item? A sledgehammer to school. He blamed Minecraft for it. Similar to that, there is an article on time.com in which a dad is accused by a a hack job psychologist of unfit parenting just because he refused to take his son to McDonald's. And I'm definitely going to get into that pretty good time. And... I was thinking of getting into Rob Ford's story a little bit, but really, all I'm going to leave that to is... Jeez, I barely even know what to say. Because, sure, of course, it is definitely a good thing to know what your politicians are up to and everything, but if he... Basically, if he does his job right, then what's the big frickin' deal? It's better to have a person... Like, it, if you've seen the House TV series, the main character, House, he's a royal butthole who will insult his par patients as much as he can. Barely gives a crap about what anyone thinks, and he will shoot them down. But yet, when it comes to being a doctor, which is his job, he uh, he does freaking well at it. He's pretty much the best person at his job. And um, basically, would you rather have a butthole? of a person but they know what they're doing do this stuff or would you rather have a nice guy who doesn't know anything or um, somehow got through college or university with somehow that he written knows what he's doing um, real life Total bull crap. And, um, that's basically what I really only leave it down to is, and that, that's basically all I really have on that issue. Although, of course, there's all this stuff going on with that he's had this drug abuse in his past and obviously he's getting in a lot more trouble than these other famous people in the US get into maybe it's because we're Canada they're the US so Americans get in less trouble and not saying anything bad about Americans or Canadians but that could almost be what it seems like that or even just more so, even just that Rob Ford's just a mayor and these people are movie or um, musicians, different um, occupations could also be the factor in that. Um, and then the last article 
for tonight is YouTube and Google Plus. The whole crisis behind that whole thing there, in which、um, Google Plus comments have taken over, YouTube comments are gone right out of there, and everyone, well, YouTube channels are now being forced to switch to the new system.、Um, Are being forced to switch, not switch. Are being forced to get Google account, Google Plus accounts in order to post comments. And if it to load up here, so that I can pick up my show notes, just to make sure I have already gotten this one thing talked about, because I am fearing I have not talked about it yet. And no, I have not talked about it. And oh yes, that's what it was. The last thing on the list for things this episode is well, actually, I'll probably get to the YouTube thing last, but um, the whole thing going on with Wild Game Studios. Um, if you've heard of. Day one, Gary's incident, in which it is the widely、um, critical failure indie game that has again review、uh, received very bad reviews, and not to mention the company that makes the game absolutely is unprofessional. But I'll get to that in details, which I still. Lack、like、a bumper for it. Maybe I'll get one for the tenth. Or if you guys would like to help me out with that, just send it to a link that I will probably provide in the description, unless I can figure that out on the site or something. Or even just add me on Skype, JBJ Blaze, and send me the bumper file. But anyhow, let's get to the details. Do 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 do. So, what's gone on with the umbapapa not loving it? Dad accused of unfit parenting for refusing to take his son to McDonald's. So, if it will load up. So what happened here is、um, during an Aug an October thirtieth visit, the boy、um, insisted on a trip to Golden Arches rather than the Manhattan restaurant where Score normally takes him, which Score is. Um, his father. So, score wary of, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, sir. But、uh, I'll go with sure. Maybe no score sounds better. Wary of junk food consumption, declined to do so, and offered instead to take him any place else, which triggered a tra- tantrum. So. What happened here is again he refuses to. David scored refuses to take his son.、Um, if I can see that name again. Okay, it doesn't show the boy's name, but、um, he refuses to take his and his wife's、um, Barry Eunice score their、um, four-year-old son to McDonald's. And interestingly, Schiller, who happens to be Marilyn Schiller, who happens to be their、um, court-appointed psychologist,、um, who I also like, well, prefer to call a hack job psychologist, 
claims that he is holy, and that is W H O L L Y, and capable of taking care of the child, just because he doesn't let his kid get McDonald's. Now, McDonald's has been heavily known for their fattening foods.、Um, if you've seen the Super Size Me film,、um, the guy, th- this documentary is about、um, a guy who tries out this. McDonald's diet, where he only eats food that comes from McDonald's, and there is supposed to be some vomiting in the documentary. Not sure if it's actually sh- actually shown because I haven't seen it myself, but、um, y- you just see that all over the place. That McDonald's is not healthy food. If you Look up.、Uh, there's pictures on Google Images of children that are probably 200 to 300, and how old are they? 12 to 15, or even at the highest 13 or 14, and they're chubby sons of buggers, and. Some psychologist is saying that it's wrong to not have your kid this freaking fat, and I'm not. I'm not saying that. Just, um. And I'm not saying that just one course of McDonald's makes you fat. It doesn't make you fat, but if you eat it on a regular basis, you will get fat. Don't even get in denial of it. Otherwise, you're just proving that you're ignorant. Trust me, I know a person who drinks too much pop and denies that it's bad. Everybody knows pop's bad for you. It's got carbonated water. Actually, I'm not sure if carbonated water is that big of a thing. But the sugar content and everything—that stuff rots your teeth. And if you have too much pop, that's gonna rot out your teeth and whatnot. Especially if you're not taking daily care of your teeth, which, by the way, I do. I brush every night. <laughs> not sure if anyone needed to know that, but. <sighs> At least maybe have the kid go to Harvey's. That would have been more not as bad because they actually make their food maybe more nutritional. I could be wrong on that, but everybody knows McDonald's to be a fattening fast food palace. Like probably only. One percent of what you could get at McDonald's is good for you, unless well, maybe maybe the apple slices, the apple juice, a couple things there might be good for you, but a huge majority of McDonald's food is not good for you, to put it simply. And for some reason, a psychologist disagrees that a kid should be refused admission into a fast food palace. That does that mean we're not allowed to feed kids healthy food? Like, there was this petition that I made a post on Blaze on Nation on the blog、um, months ago, in which these parents. Had this petition going against Nickelodeon, targeting their continuation of featuring、um, advertisements to promote. Well, 
watch me, junk food advertisements. And what I laid that down to was that's that's basically like you're wanting to have this big ticket company do your parenting for you. Like it's just as easy as when the commercial comes up, you just tell your kid, no, you aren't getting any of that bad food. You are going to eat what's good for you. Only on select days may you have bad food, but you are not having this bad food. Just because the commercial people say it's good or tasty or any of that. Like, it's just lazy. And not to mention a complete waste of time to go after a big ticket company to have them doing this crap for you. Like, they have their own business to deal with. They have these advertisements to pay for their network, to pay for their shows, and the whole nine yards. They don't have time to... Well, they might have time, but really they... Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. And yes, I'm going off topic because my computer just went on a screensaver, and here comes my wallpaper of the um, scene from the new Carrie movie. Oh, just totally creeped me out there. But, um, back on topic, it's called if you don't want your kids getting into that trash, do that yourself. Don't rely on companies that have better things to do than to deal with your brat that you call your child and tell them, oh, we're going to have this ad going on, but you should not eat it because your annoying parent wanted us to tell you that you shouldn't eat this, but we just need to pay for our network and TV shows and whatnot, so... That's the point, kid. But, um... And then another piece to this is that he has launched a defamitation suit against the psychologist. Now, originally I was thinking, you know... Getting money out of this witch ain't really the greatest thing. Because she's just saying stupid crap. So why not ignore it? But really, she's costing him time. She's causing him to be in court. Costing him money. Over a royally stupid thing. That obviously the psychologist doesn't know anything about. Or well, she might know some things, but she fails to understand that refusing a kid admission into a McDonald's restaurant is not a bad idea. It shows them that you care, that you don't want them ending up fat, or any of that. <laughs> it all comes with having good choices. As opposed to bad. And that's... But, you know what? Those parents that launched the petition against Nickelodeon, they should petition the psychologist here. You should not be encouraging kids to be allowed to McDonald's. You should be promoting better lifestyle. Now that petition I might sign. Actually, I rather sign the petition that costs the heck out of Mrs. Schiller and gets her fired. Because like I said before, why have 
people who are of a certain personality but can't do their job right. And this is an example. Except for she's obviously not bright. And at the same time doesn't do her job well. Then again, of course, you have to um, be bright to know how to do your job well. But, um, the last paragraph here says, Still, for all the trouble she wishes that he had just given in and taken the kid to Mickey D's. But you get nervous about rewarding bad behavior, he said. I think it was 19, a 1950s equivalent of sending your child to bed without dinner. Ah, I did not notice that that was what... Oh, yeah, that's score, not Schiller. Did I say Schiller? Maybe I'll just edit that out. My bad. But, um... He suspects the whole thing is a ploy by his wife to win full custody, which... Unfortunately, I forgot to bring it in rather than leaving it out. But the other thing is that his wife, Barry Uniscor, hired this hack job psychologist. So shame on you. And yes, I'm saying this with a half smiling voice, but I'm happy to be shameful. Because this is a shame. Promoting bad food habits for your own kid. What kind of mother are you? Other than a bad mother. So, the next thing on the list of things that I'm going to be talking about this episode. And, oh good. My um, Google Docs show notes here just about froze up. And... So, before I get on to the YouTube thing, there's been a, been a thing going on with the game Day One Gary's Incident, which is, which has been seen as a, um, indie version of Far Cry 3 meets something crappy. And, this problem especially came to attention with a video by the British YouTube video game critic called, well, Total Biscuit, aka the Cynical Brit, which you can find his YouTube channel at youtube.com slash cynical Brit. That's B-R-I-T. And so, this video on his channel, and I'll link to it in the show notes as well, um, what the issue here is, is that he made a review, a review saying that the game was trash, like everyone else says it is, really, because everyone says Day One is a bad game and not worth playing, and, um, interestingly enough, even though he got full permission to critique the game from the CEO of Wild Games himself, he posts the video with the monetization and then all of a sudden, boom, it's taken down. Although, it is still technically available, but only as the, uh, what what would you call it? Basically, his monologue of how terrible a game developer they are and how much it peeps them off. And I'm not making fun of that. I hugely agree. And honestly, as an independent game developer myself, even though my development process has been very slow, 
Um, but after Math the Post Box text based game, if you've heard of it, um, I am rather offended by this man's actions. So how it goes is, I guess he must have bad, well, low publicity or something, because when he starts up this Kickstarter campaign to get money raised for the game, they don't get much for donations at all. Although, they do get one big, I think, one grand of a donation from the developer himself, or well, the CEO himself. And... That just really looks bad on a Kickstarter campaign, really. That you'd have to fund your own campaign. That's... Basically money your company already has. Unless you're taking out of, it out of the pocket of, um... Pardon me. Unless you're taking it out of the pocket of your own, rather than your company's, but... Still, though, it like in these contests hosted by these companies, one of the ineligible peoples are the people working for the company. And so, really, you could say that his kick-starting contribution was ineligible. Then again, he owns the company anyway, so what point is it going to make other than... The fact that they have low publicity, and obviously no one likes their idea. Well, some people might, but obviously if a lot of people like their idea, or if they publicized their Kickstarter well enough, that they'd get at least the, quite a bit more money. But then the next part to this is that The game gets bad reviews. Oh, actually, what it was was the game got onto Steam Screenlight Service, which is where you can vote for games that could later, with your um, support, appear on the Steam store. And so what happened here was that the CEO decided to bribe, well, Wild Game Studio decided to bribe people with copies, free copies of Day One, just to get green light votes. Now, I, I'm sure it's, well, it probably is against some terms of service there. But I'm sure it's not illegal, but for goodness sake, if you're gonna try to get your game on Steam, um, well, it's one thing to just directly get it on Steam, but if you're using Greenlight, it's not about what you think about your game, it's about what the audience thinks. My game Aftermath, some people hate the idea of it. Some people think it should stay off of Steam, go to Android, or just stay off of Steam or Android. Um, I admit my games had a bit its share of hate. Then again, not that I'm being a big complainer about it, because depending on the type of hate it is, if they're actually giving constructive advice oh, pardon me if they're actually giving constructive criticism about the game then I can definitely deal with that because then I know what I can change about the game but no they're like let's just bribe these people to get our game on Greenlight. Um, 
And actually, I've, I don't think I have seen a petition yet on change.org for um, getting the game off of Steam. Um, if you do see one on the internet, please show me the link because I want to sign it and get that thing off of Steam. It's unbelievable what those people are doing. But, um, and then after all that, all these critics are making bad reviews about their game, but then, what's next is their, the people of their own company are going on these critic sites, like I think Metacritic was one of them, and making positive reviews about the game. And obviously, it's all nonsense because, well, they're just advertising their game, really, and, and they're also trying to get rid of all these other bad reviews, including Total Biscuits, and it just really peeves me off that people would be so unprofessional, and then even to lie about it, that's another point that really disgusts me, and I had that instant with the carry wallpaper again, I can send it to y'all if you want, um, it, it's really cool, but, um, it, it just really peeves me off that they'd even go towards saying that the person never had permission to make a um, commercial product out of their product. When in plain text, they said yes. They approved. They gave permission. And all of a sudden, backlash. No, you did not have permission. And it's being taken down. Just because we can't handle the truth. That's what you people cannot handle there at Wild Game Studios. You cannot handle the truth about your game. I get a lot of hate on my game. Some of it I just shrug off. But if it's actually stuff like. I don't like how linear it is, I don't like how repetitive something is, or that you can easily die a lot in the game, and that's die a lot, not die all. Like D-I-A-L. But, um, with that kind of criticism, I build upon it, see what I can fix with that. Or even just let it go. I'm not gonna go off and try to hide their bad reviews about my game. If they want to say stupid stuff about my game, I'll let them. And then they'll get to look stupid. That's why I don't like deleting comments unless they're spam or dangerous comments. So that... The whole world can see how full of crap they are. That's the whole fun of the internet. People will say stupid things, and rather than delete it, unless it's got a a um, spam link or scam link to it, or any of that, or um, AESC2 art of something inappropriate, then, de sure, delete it, but if it's something else and it's just sounding stupid, leave it there. Let people see how messed up these people are. If they're saying stuff like maybe, oh, the father of that kid is so correct about taking Minecraft away from him. Let that comment stay. 
And then we can all make fun of the person. Okay, maybe not so much, but that just shows how close-minded a person is about kids playing games like Minecraft. Especially when a game like Minecraft is a great learning tool. Just depends on how you work with it. That's the thing. You just gotta have to find a unique, creative way to make your game the way you want it. Like, there's even an educational mod out there called Minecraft EDU or um, QCraft, which adds quantum physics to Minecraft. It makes it educational. Just add that flavor to it, and it doesn't hurt anybody. Sure, it might send a lot of light into your eyes because of flashing screen radiation, whatever, but... At least the person is still learning something in the process. Or even with something that came up once on the shaft about a person who wanted to do up YouTube Let's Plays for Minecraft. It's not a bad thing. Because if they're going to do some editing there, they're, they'll get to learn some stuff about editing videos. Or even how to entertain people on YouTube. And if you have to, have comments disabled. Or even just have it where maybe parents have to approve of the comment or something. But... Really, the, the, there's no need to hide this stuff. Let it show. And that's Wild Game Studios' problem is they don't want bad stuff said about their game showing. They want good stuff showing. AKA the stuff that is total rubbish. Totally untrue things about their game is what they want their audience to see. Um... And then the last thing, which has really bugged me, and I also will have a link to Boogie2988, his um, video about this, in which recently Google Plus comments has been made the new comment system on YouTube. So, a couple weeks back, I had received this notification about updating my channel so that I'd have a Google Plus page connected to it and everything. I just shrugged it off, left it alone. I don't need Google Plus on my channel or any of that. Until all of a sudden, I try to comment somewhere, and boom. Now I can't comment just because I'm not connected to Google+. I would connect it to my personal profile, which I'd rather do, because then it gives me less to look after, plus then I could easily make YouTube posts from my personal profile. But then... My YouTube would either have to be NPW, which are my initials, or I'd have to change the name of my personal file to JBJ Blaze, have it be JBJ Blaze on my YouTube channel. Or I'd have to make a whole new page called either JBJ Blaze or The Flippin' Awesome. And... I don't want a new Google Plus page for it. And the other big problem I have with this is that how I have it set up on my YouTube channel is so that my YouTube identity and channel title are separate. 
My channel title is The Flippin' Awesome. My YouTube identity is JBJ Blaze. I don't want to have my channel title be JBJ Blaze. My YouTube identity be awkwardly The Flippin' Awesome. It. <laughs> I don't get why this has to be implemented. And with all this stuff with that, now you can add filters to comments or delete comments. Basically, better moderate comments. Why can't? Why could that not be with the original YouTube comments for crying out loud? Not to mention. Another huge problem is that now people can leave whole stories on YouTube comment sections. Bitburner once said in a tweet that he got to read The Hobbit in YouTube comments. There are people leaving and, um, Maybe I'll leave a title for um, any youngsters listening so that you um, maybe tune out for this next tiny bit. So I will have the um, notification thing here well I say the not maybe not that safe for workplace terms so tune out for now so now people can also post as much as racist symbols like swastikas or genitalia there's people leaving a S C two art of penises while well, being the genitalia. But there's swastikas, the genitalia, there's the stickman Bob. Oh, he's gonna take over YouTube if people don't if YouTube doesn't stop well, not even really YouTube, Google. If they don't stop trying to keep their stupid Google Plus system on YouTube. And then another huge problem. Whoops. I seem to have forgotten. There. Now I can tune back in. But, um... Or even... The other thing with now that people, now people can leave links and YouTube channels like, um, Boogie's channel or Ant, actually I'm not sure if Ant Venom had to do it, but I do know in the Little Wood or Yogg Cass Martin has had to do it and thing says in chat the implementation is almost as bad as Obamacare I'm sure my mother could say that too about the Avon site because she's an Avon lady and j just bad web developers everywhere here and um so now people can post links to porn sites or other virus-loaded sites. Any of that. That puts users at huge risk. And of course... And, and even now with... Um, kind of like this fine flu pandemic. We're having the crypto locker pandemic. Um, apparently PewDiePie and Total Halibut are even more people who've... Removed comments. Um, and that's from Thing. Just to give him credit for that. But there's... 
basically just links to anywhere. And then hashtags, yeah, they're not, they're really not necessary. Because it's just on a YouTube video. You hit that hashtag, you're, what's the point of that? Really? It, it, I don't think I even have to explain that. What's the point of having hashtags on Google Plus? I mean, not Google Plus. On having um YouTube hashtags. Well, even though that, well, that is with Google Plus. But what's the point? Really, what is the point? Well, I suppose other than actually that it would redirect to Google Plus, but that should not be the point to this. The comments should be YouTube, not linking back to a whole other site. Th then again, with channels like Yogcast Martin, sees he and the Yogcast have switched to Reddit. Which good for you guys. These are making your stuff a lot safer. And then again, fortunately for me, I don't need to make that change, or at least not yet, because my channel's not that big. Only have about 24 or 25 subscribers. I think just 24, though. But that's my view, my insight on the whole YouTube problem and just for goodness sake for the love of God what have you YouTube Google please please for us all fix this this is ruining YouTube this is ruining the comment section Actually, this has destroyed the comment section. And if I had a video thing going here, you'd see that I have my hands out. But I mean it exactly. It is awful. It's broken. E even your own co-founder has dropped his guts about it, not as in he's dead, but after after eight years of the very first YouTube video which was posted by him, forget his name already, but um, his latest thing on YouTube has been a comment saying, um, why the, why the F word should we have to, um, set up Google Plus accounts just to comment. Um, YouTube co-founder Jawed, Jawed Karim. It's on his channel. If only this thing would load up faster. And getting there. So what he says is, why the F word do I need a Google Plus account to comment on a video, and that's eight years after hit the very first video on YouTube, which is uploaded at 8.27 p.m. on Saturday, April 23rd, 2005, um, me at the zoo. And um, I'll probably provide a link to this somewhere. Um, do be warned, it's not safe for a workplace because of the F word. But, seriously, why should there be a, um, and actually I don't even really mind much of it. I, I like Google Plus. But actually, really, even just having it integrated, at the least, have it optional. 
not mandatory but optional that's all that should be there is just have Google Plus for YouTube being optional and if a person uses Google Plus to get onto YouTube maybe even add a feature where they can delete their Google Plus accounts and just run their YouTube channel <laughs> Th thing says yes optional but then again there's all these youtubers that have already made the change and they're they're not doing too badly but for youtubers like myself otherwise I'd consider myself more so a youtuber wannabe because I'm not that popular yet yet but um because I need to have, well, I don't need to, but I'm not making the change unless I can keep my channel title and YouTube identity different. If I have to make a Google Goal Plus page, fine, but I'm not having the difference between my YouTube identity and, um, channel title but um, that's gonna be it for this episode um, so I guess I'll get into shout outs so yeah <laughs> okay so in shout outs um, excuse a crappy bumper um, <laughs> thing says I won't be surprised if the people who implemented this got fired. We all make, make mistakes, but this, it's no mistake, it's a disaster. I can't agree more. But, um, so shout outs go to, um, the team at FF Split. You can check them out on Twitter at FF Split or FFSplit.com. I'm still waiting for them to add the feature where you can use media files, but they're like the VLC media player when it comes to, um, well, in terms of uh, appearance and lightweightness when it comes to live streaming. I haven't used it for live streaming yet, but I will once they add capability of media files for sure. Um, store.notalic.com, that's N-O-T-L-E-K dot com, in which the guy, um, who owns the Notalic site appeared on the fourth episode, the one with Matt Folks, and, um, it, it's not up right now, unfortunately, but... Go there, sign up for web services, well, web hosting, I mean, and it it, it starts at about a dollar ninety nine per month, so very cheap, and you get pretty good size for what you're looking for. So I recommend you check his thing out there. And at least once it's back up and running, I'm still waiting for a response about it. Um, yeah, he even has it listed on his main site. But um, I am still contacting him about it. But um, give him your money. Get great web services. Um, once I can, I'll be getting it too and um trading revolution sorry I lost my breath there at trading revo or on the steam groups um trading revolution which we have a new logo up and we are the group that has over 11,000 members um, we are a trading community, um, there's just a gaming blog dot wordpress dot com and that's blog the L O G G 
Um, they have awesome news, reviews, and whatnot at their site. Um, IndieGamers.co.uk. Um, we do reviews, interviews, previews. All kinds of stuff there. And any other things that I am hopefully not going to miss this episode. Let's check my previous show notes. Because I have a bad feeling I might miss something. Although I think I probably have already gone through it. Um... Although, for one thing, I really hope everyone enjoy, had enjoyed Minecon, and I guess that is all the shoutouts, and I just got a Steam notification, but anyhow, um, and my very last shoutout goes to anyone and everyone who watches this, um, the v video version, anyone live watching, or anyone listening to the audio version of this podcast, um, I plan on finding a good, well, better podcast host than what I've been using, which doesn't really work, which I've been, I, I've tried it on engine, but doesn't work that way. Um, Spreaker doesn't give me a long enough episode title, so I'm not too grateful about that. But I do plan on figuring something out, and yeah, that's about it. Oh, and before I go, um, it will be on my Twitter, or if I can find it somewhere, probably on my Twitter though, I have recently released a new remix of Linkin Park's, um, Waiting for a Light That ne Not Waiting for A Light That Never Comes. It is on their Indaba, or Indaba, whatever it, however it's pronounced. Um, you can, oh, here it is, ndaba.us slash AJ, and then in capitals, ZH, I will have that in the show notes if you want to check it out. Um, I've decided to end my couple months long hiatus of releasing music that I've produced. Plus, most of it's stuff I'm not sure about releasing quite yet. But, um, I have a person who's waiting to get a message back from me, so... I will close this up here and now. Thank you all for tuning in, and I will see y'all next time for the 10th episode. And did I ever mention, this is episode 9. And... Body bye. What do you mean you want more? Or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonation.tk for more articles and show notes. The flippin' awesome.engine.com slash BNP for show notes and to sponsor a future episode. And that is all. By the way, if you need CPR, just call me. 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 CPR.